Hello friends, it's Techman Pat. Hope you are well. Today we are going to be reviewing this, the ASUS ZenBook 14, the world's smallest 14-inch laptop. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but I want to say it off the get-go. This is probably one of the best daily drivers, general use laptops I've ever used. And there's a few reasons why. I think it's pretty much better than the 12 inch MacBooks. Now those 12 inch MacBooks have been canceled and been replaced by those bigger, bulkier Airs by Apple for some strange reason. This is your, probably your best replacement. Now this is 14 inches, but it is a wide screen. So as you can see here, it's pretty good to consume some content, some movies, and even YouTube videos that are in widescreen format. It does tout a touch screen, and that, my friends, is probably one of the biggest selling points of non-Apple products. Touch screens, I never really used them before. This is the first laptop I've had to actually use and I thought I'd never want to use it at all. But I did. Every time I was browsing a website, I'd be using that touch screen, scrolling through, and I loved it. I couldn't believe how fun it was and how easy it was to use. Even though the touch screen, which we'll talk about at soon, it's not a touchpad, it's a touch screen that acts like a touchpad. Even though it was right there, it was so much easier to just chill on the couch and scroll through with the screen itself. It's 1080p with some really nice color reproduction. Movies look really nice. It's great to consume content. Now, on that note, a little bit of a negative. Sometimes when I'm trying to hit these buttons at the top, I would touch the screen and tap out into other areas of the, the where I was or I'd tap into another area of a movie. You know how little scroll bars across. It was a little bit annoying, but I got used to it fairly quickly. Sometimes I didn't even remember that that was a touch screen, a touch screen to point at something and move things. So remember guys, this is a touch screen. You can touch it now. You don't have to swat away people's hands when they point at your screen. The glass here is really nice and tough and it really makes it feel like you can actually touch it. You know, sometimes there's screens that you can't quite feel or you might feel like you're gonna break or just poke your hand straight through. This is not one of those things. It's build quality is absolutely fantastic. So it's a good segue here. When you press down on here, it feels really, really solid. What they've done here, they've packed a lot of stuff into the chassis, meaning that it doesn't flex. And I really, really like that. I hate a laptop that flexes when you start typing on it. And Speaking of typing, what's it like to actually write things? Well, in fact, uh, you might have seen my NBN update video. I typed this up all on this laptop. That's what I really like to do. I like to sit down and type up a script, get all the news together on a single laptop or a keyboard that I'm reviewing to really make sense of it, to use it on a, on a long extended period of time. And I really loved using this laptop and its keyboard. The buttons are nice and clicky. They feel very responsive. And when you're typing away, I actually didn't make many mistakes. I make more mistakes with my gaming keyboard than I did with this, which was absolutely fantastic. Now, one thing to note, and this is probably not really a bad thing about this, but the keyboard layout is probably not my favorite in regards to the arrows and the delete button. Now, I like my delete button to be fairly accessible, and the problem with this one, it's right next to the power off button or power on, whatever you might wanna call it, and I hit that power on button a little bit too often. Now, you can change the settings in Windows of what that power button does, but, Again, it was a little bit thing. That delete button is a bit small and I like to delete forward and backward when I'm typing up a document. Those arrow keys are also a little bit small, very Mac-like, but I do like them to be a little bit bigger so I know which one I'm pressing when I'm going down. I've tapped that up one a few times. So that's my only complaints about the keyboard. Now, the other thing, and it's more of what you're gonna fit in this keyboard, and I understand why it's done, but the function key, a lot of laptops do it. I understand, I get it. Function keys with F, uh, one, two, three, four, five to 12. They also do other things. I get it. I don't like it, but all laptops do it. So you kind of, it's hard to get away from. Now, while you're consuming all that media content, you're also getting sound by Harman and Carden. Now, I'm not from that generation that was inspired by this Harman and Carden sound. Like, I don't know what that means. What are you trying to sell to me? I'm from a generation and the people who would be buying this are probably from a generation that don't know about the history of those, that company. So to me, this sounds good. I don't know, I don't know what that connection is. Like if they said, 
I don't know, sound by Samsung and be like, mm, okay, that's a little bit interesting or maybe sound by Sony. Now that makes a little bit sense. They make music, you know, maybe they mixed this or maybe they managed it, but I don't know who that is and it doesn't really make sense much to me. Is it a high end? I understand it is. I looked it up, but, and? I've seen another laptop about seven years ago that uh, I bought for my mum uh, that had this. Again, it was apparently top end, but I just don't know if it means a lot for a laptop this big with the speakers are that small. But in saying that, the sound on this, when you're watching a movie, top notch, you're gonna consume your media and you're gonna watch uh, movies, TV shows, whatever you wanna watch, you'll be quite happy using this. But don't forget, it also has a 3.5 millimeter jack so you can plug in your actual headphones and listen to stuff through there. Now, before we move on to this top area here, I wanna talk about one thing that I just cannot believe every laptop is not including anymore. Windows Hello is the Windows version of Face ID on an Apple device. I know I'm talking about Apple a lot, but those two things just, just I love. I love Face ID on an Apple, and this is pretty much the same thing. It's great, there's a little area here, it lights up a little bit red, you can see it trying to scan your face, and it gets you into Windows so much quicker than a pin or a password, and with security. You can't just print a picture and put it to it, it won't unlock with that. It actually needs a three-dimensional face, and I love it. I just, I love opening it up. It lights up, looks at my face and goes straight to the desktop. I wasn't even ready to start work and I was already on the desktop. I am absolutely thrilled and I cannot wait to buy a laptop that has this technology. This feature, Windows Hello, I'm blowing away, guys. I know it might sound weird, but it's really good to unlock this with your face. Because how do you look at a laptop? You don't go, you know, from the side, from the top, you open it up in front of you and it looks straight into your face and unlocks it. It's really great, works really fast, very easy to set up. Let's quickly talk about the specs before I get into the more exciting bits and pieces. It has an i7 in this one, works really well, super fast, 16 gigs of RAM minimum. I, I don't want any laptop that has any less than that. Don't buy a laptop that has any less than that. It also has a MX150, which means you can play some games like Torchlight 1 and 2, or maybe even some other games. However, the screen is 60 hertz, so don't expect fast-paced gaming, but if you just wanna blow off some steam when you're, I don't know, at the office, or maybe at an airport, you might be able to play some top scroller games. So, hey, bring your Steam library with you, and you can, because this one has one terabyte of ultra-fast SSD, and that really makes a big difference, because laptops are portable, and if you have more storage on it, you can, well, you don't have to worry about storage and the cloud, so you can store it all locally, all that media content that you're gonna be consuming. I talked about that build quality a little while back. I really like the way it is built. It is metallic, it's a bit shiny. Fingerprints aren't actually that bad on this device. The actual metal bit on the top, it feels like aluminium, kind of metally. It's, it's kind of, it's very smooth, it feels really good, and it makes the device feel very premium. The underside is plastic, doesn't look as premium, but still, I think it's fine. It's usually flat down, and when you're carrying it around, it's probably in your hand, and it's light, around a kilogram, which means that this is an extremely good portable laptop. Now let's talk about the I.O. and another reason why it's portable. First of all, the brick that it comes with to charge your device is really, really small. It's as big as something for a phone. I, I kid you not, it's very small and I'm very impressed. It has a fantastic all day battery. I haven't really had to charge it. It's, it's really nice and I'm very happy with it. I, I actually just left it off and until Windows said, hey, you've got 10%, I was like, oh, I, I haven't even thought about charging it. Very impressive. So on one side, we've got a USB, normal standard one. We've got a USB-C HDMI out for a second screen if you're a workaholic. We've got the actual charging port, which is a circle one. It's not USB-C. That's a little bit disappointing because you expect it to be a little bit more premium, but okay, I get it. But USB-C is the future. Now we've got two extra little grills here for the speakers and we've got some stickers about windows and a cooling port. Now one thing about the cooling port is when you actually lift the screen up and open it up, it actually pushes the whole laptop up a bit which makes it very comfortable to type on and it also gives enough space for air to flow under here so you can have a very cool laptop. Now I mentioned this in my review of the ASUS Strix 3. ASUS has really ticked the box in regards to keeping the laptops cool and efficient 
and fast because if it overheats, it goes slow. And this does not. Not that you'll be rendering too much stuff on it, but you can, I tried it. On this side, we've got a micro SD card slot. So happy with it because if you've got a camera or if you've got a GoPro, you can plug it in straight into here and get those files. We've got another USB. We've got the 3.5 millimeter jack. We've got a battery indicator and we've got some little lights that flash by. Now, I wanna to get to the last thing that is this laptop's unique selling point. So let me unlock it. As you can see, it's looking for me now. Boom. Thank you very much. It's unlocked. I love it. it it's very impressive. Now, on the bottom of this bit here, we got ourselves a touchpad. It is large, which is good. It is a screen, which is interesting. But there are a few caveats. Now, first of all, it acts like a second screen to this. You've got a 1080p screen and you've got another screen over here. So if you're mousing down, you can actually pull down some of your windows into there and you can view them on here. Now, the thing is, it's not like you're gonna be browsing through anything here. Like if you drag, let's say Reddit down into here, you can't really read it, it's too small. So for me, it's more of a vanity item. I put my Techman Pat logo on the back, it looks really cool, but I couldn't figure out how to hide these really weird shortcuts. Like these shortcuts had nothing to do with productivity that I want to do, and I couldn't seem to get rid of them. They're, they're weird, oh, that's all I have to say. The other thing is, is if you're a right-handed person, you might tap with your thumb to do the click. So you move around with your four fingers, but you tap with the thumb. Now exactly where the thumb is, is where you enable and disable this touchpad, and that's frustrating. Now, again, I couldn't figure out how to get it to switch. There's a bunch of settings in here, but I don't know, I spent 15 minutes on it, and I was like, nah, don't bother. I'm not gonna try and use it too much. But if you get past those things and you get rid of that stuff on top, maybe there'll be some hacks or things to remove it. I think this is one of the best touchpads you can have. It's really cool to put a nice little image. It's like putting your own unique creativity or your own unique personality on it and making it feel a little bit nicer. I really like it. That's, that's what I would use it for. I wouldn't use it to play a video because why? I've got a beautiful screen up here. I wouldn't read anything on it, no. But what I can do is use it as a number pad, which works really well. I can use it to maybe use it as a calculator, which worked really well too. So there's a couple of uses for it as a second screen, but I think reading or pulling down tabs into it is not really the use case for it. So what I see from it is there's this extra little screen. Now, Asus has made a laptop where the keyboard is below and there's a whole half a screen here. And I think that's the future, putting screens on both sides will probably be like ultimate future. But I think we'll be noticing that more and more laptops have extra screens. Now, apart from those little pain points, I wanna point out that when you press on the screen, it does bend down, like it goes a little bit and you can see that dust can get in the gaps here. So I'm a little bit worried that if anything happens, uh, let's say to, pushing it down and getting some extra stuff in there. I think it'll be a little bit problematic, stuff getting in there. Like I actually nearly lost a piece of paper, like a really small cut piece of paper disappeared in there. And I was like, oh, I needed to pull it out. So I don't know, it could be something that people use. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if this screen would be something you would use. Now friends, overall, the cost of this laptop is around the same price of a MacBook Air. And that makes it actually quite interesting because I would say this is a little bit better now, unless you're obviously in the Apple ecosystem. As a Windows laptop, this is extremely light, small, and very portable. And that makes it a winner in my books because if I'm gonna be doing gaming, I want a high performance laptop with a big screen. So it's not gonna be portable and I'm not gonna be walking around doing things with it like work. You can but I want it to be easy because I don't want to struggle when I'm going somewhere for work or traveling for work. But this, this you can take to meetings, it'll look smooth, stylish, and you won't be embarrassed when you open up the ASUS ROG logo. Vroom. This is a worker's laptop. This is a laptop you probably buy for school or university. Highly recommended for that because it is fast and it is portable and the battery lasts a long time. I really love it. This would be a laptop I would buy for my parents like I said, a uni student, and even for my wife to just do general browsing. But I highly recommend it because of that keyboard, you can take some really good notes when you are at school. 
Friends, thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to ASUS for sending me this. If you guys want to see more, stay tuned to this channel. We're going to be checking out the 30th anniversary of ASUS. It's going to be an event in Sydney. I'm so keen to go. Um, we're going to be putting out a lot of videos from that event. Well, depending on what's there, I don't know. Um, and we'll be putting them on this channel. So if you're keen to see that, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you throw the like button and let me know in the comments what you think about a laptop like this. Should I be checking out more laptops from ASUS? But in fact, I've got a laptop coming from HP. So there's a bit of competition for you guys. We'll see what that comes out like and I'll get you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.